Welcome, welcome again to another segment. This is speci specifically formulated for YouTube. And guess what? It's the YouTube segment of the Ask Sister Jean Gospel Broadcast. Praise the name of the Lord. So this broadcast, of course, is primarily geared to praying for you. We encourage you to live for Christ. And we use the stories from your life drama to exercise in the application of the Word of God. Uh, Father God, our God, our Father, let us walk in thy truth and in thy righteousness. We are not ignorant of the enemy's devices. We know that he goeth about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Help us to keep our hearts and minds on King Jesus. He is well able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his eternal throne. Oh, thank you so much, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go to our first question. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Sister Jean, my husband called me and told me that he was in the hospital. By the time I got home, cooked, packed some things from him for him, and left, I got to him late. When I inquired from the front desk how to get to him, I saw that the nurses looked a little bewildered. When I got up to his room, there was a woman sitting on his bed. She jumped up when I walked in. I said good night and asked, Who is this? Simultaneously, they answered. My husband said cousin and she said friend. Mm. I, asked, I asked her to leave. And I did not exchange another word with my husband until he could not stand it anymore and left. It's been two years already and I haven't seen him. He's, he's alive because his friends keep me updated. So based on what I'm understanding from this question is that you went to the hospital, your husband was ill, you went to the hospital to see him. But when you went up to his room, you saw a lady sitting on his bed, and you said good evening. They were courteous to say hi, and then you asked, who is this? And both of them together, the, the husband said, it's, it's his cousin, and the lady says, she's your husband's friend. So right there, you know they're lying. Um, you said you asked her to leave, and you did not exchange a word with your husband ever since. That means even after he came home from the hospital, you're saying that you didn't talk to him until he eventually just couldn't stand it anymore and he left there. All right, thanks for sharing. <laughs> so, Miss, Madam, and Lady, <laughs> Malice keeping will cut your heartstring. You really can't keep Malice. I couldn't do that. You told her to leave and she left. And I could understand if you don't talk to him that evening, but you don't go back to see him in the hospital. You didn't bring any more food or anything, no change of raiment or nothing for him. Oh boy, you're good. You stay in that house with a guy and don't exchange a word in English. Why, me talk too much, me couldn't do it. All right. Well, Proverbs 15 and verse 1, let me read that for you. A soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. So you didn't say a word, so you didn't stir up no anger. You just avoided the man, you just ignored him. If he's coming and said good evening, you said nothing back. If he, if he said, um, darling, um, the soap, the, we need soap in the bathroom, you don't even pay attention to it. Oh my God. You seem to have handled it well, I'm going to say, at the hospital, because at least you said good evening, or you greeted the person and said, who is this? And then you probably said kindly, said, can you leave? Or whatever the case might be. But then something evil have happened after that, though, because you handled it well at the hospital, but afterwards, you didn't seem to have it together. Because I am not going to encourage you to hold anybody in malice. You understand Ephesians 4, 31, 32 persuades us to lay aside malice and to put aside bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil 
speaking. Your silence can be extremely more dangerous than speaking. I wish sometimes I do I could be upset with somebody and don't say anything. Sometimes I do, but I, I am not so good at it. I'm a talkative person. As you can see by the programs I have, I like to talk. So that would be a difficult one for me to stay in a house with somebody for so long and not to talk. And for two years, you don't talk to the man. Mercy, if you're dead tomorrow, you're going to hell, sister. Forgive him, man, man. Forgive him. Even if you don't live with him, forgive him. You understand? And let him know that you forgive him. That you have forgiven him and, and, and move on with your life. But don't cause this one thing to send your soul to hell. We are about saving and targeting souls for the kingdom of God. We can't afford for little things like these. We don't want anything to cause you to lose your soul. But this is nothing. You understand? This is nothing for you to lose your soul over. You need to get to the point of forgiveness. And remember, forgiveness is not for the other person. It's for you. Because when you, when you are hurt and you can forgive the person, you feel free. And you are healed as well. Alright? It heals you. Forgiveness heals and it makes us free. It is also obvious that you haven't forgiven him based on the information laid out in front, in, in front of me. Because, first of all, this is what you said. You said, I know that he's alive because his friends keep me updated. So you are talking to the friends and asking them questions about your husband. Yeah, come on. Now, I'm not going to encourage that. I would say to you, listen. Pick up the phone and call him and I say, listen, man. You're wrong for doing what you did, but guess what? I have moved on and we we move on and with all due respect, you know, you won't, you won't be able to do it again to you, you know, but forgive the man and move on because you don't want your soul to go to hell. All right. The word of God in Matthew 6 and verse 12 says you have to forgive men their trespasses. Huh? So that God can in turn forgive you of your trespasses. So when somebody hurt us and we hold on to it and say, mm, nah, talk to her. I mean, I'm talking to him, you know. So how do you expect the Lord now to forgive you and me? Mm -mm. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. All right. Our sister Jean, I met a man 15 years ago. All this time we have lived together and the union brought three girls. Last year I discovered that he was having a relationship. I decided to play PI. Sister Jean, the man is married with children and now has a new girlfriend. So he has you, he has another life over there and he has a girlfriend. So it's three whom him want to run. Alright, so let's See if we understand this now. Sister Jean, in my fright, in my fright, uh, I called the girlfriend. I got the number from his phone. And went to the wife's home. My God. Opened the door and he was, and he saw me standing there. So that means he was at the house when you went there. He fainted. You know what I mean? <laughs> Pussy poor man. <laughs> oh my God. The wife and I gave him a decent flogging after I told her who I am. So, what do Beat him back to life. <laughs> what do do? So, you went to the wife's house. And when the wife opened the door... I'm just trying to picture things in my mind. You rung, you rung the doorbell and the wife comes to the door. When the wife opens the door, you look in, you saw the man, the man saw you and the man faint. <laughs> and the both of you turn and beat the man. Give him a good flogging. Oh my gosh. No, sir. You people are something else. So you told the wife 
after you told the wife what what has what, who are you you both be the other girl i had already told so now i have no idea what he's going to do <laughs> so now <laughs> God, you people are something so now you don't have a girlfriend don't have no wife and you don't have no matey that's a must that so matey matey are which one you don't have no girlfriend that are the matey right he don't have no wife and he don't have no sweetheart and that may be say mighty god do not bad thanks for sharing thanks for sharing they give me a little joke tonight well let me look at this question <laughs> you're always encouraged let me say this let me start first by saying you're always you're always encouraged to check out a person so say you're standing at the bus stop and somebody saw you and said man the way you look nice and you have a good conversation and it, you go on the bus and you know you sit down together and you have a good conversation i'm just making up something as, as i go along and you say you know what we exchange numbers and we're going to talk listen to me check out the man you play piano late you should have played piano a long time from the beginning you should have you should have been a a a a a, 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 a private investigator hey and find out what's going on Right, check him out. All right, and even though you already did that, a relationship you might go back into another relationship. You need to get before you get involved with anybody. You need to check the person out. Out. All right. I believe that he will bounce back, honestly, and his wife will probably forgive him and take him right back in. <laughs> you understand? Many women. They will do it. Some women, uh, don't she done? She ain't doing that no more. But some women will just beat him, put him out, take him right back in. You understand? Hopefully, he learns his lesson. Now, for you now, you need to sort your life out. All right? Because I know that you're not, not a Christian based on this kind of behavior. All right? So you just went on a revenge rampage and said listen so you fooled me all this time well watch what i'm going to do with you all right so my advice now to you spiritually and is clinically now seek ye the lord while he may be found call ye upon him while he's near forsake your evil way and your unrighteous thoughts and turn unto god will abundantly pardon you wanted to read isaiah 55 verse 7 i say this to you because in the heat of everything that's happening you have lived with this man 15 years ago oh my god 15 years and you know this that's 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 very deceptive but what the point i'm making is now you are going to come to the realization that he's gone and the gap that he used to fill is not going to be filled by him anymore. He can't go back to that because he's a married man. You don't want to encourage yourself to do that. So now you need the Lord. And one of the things I like to encourage people, don't think that, oh, you're giving your what left. A lot of Jamaicans like to say, I'm giving, no, we want to give God my what left. That's what God wants. God says, come to me as you are. So you go to God as you are, my sister, and the Lord will spice up your life change your life around change your perspective beautify you with his salvation and let me tell you what nice husband he will give to you too on top of that all right scripture reading tonight is be not deceived god is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap galatians 6 and verse 7 question sister jean I am pregnant by a man who is married and I don't know what to do. When we met two years and four months ago, he told me that he was unmarried. We started this relationship and he's been paying all my bills. He came by me, he came by me and spent most of the time at my apartment. He was able to because his wife was away for work. Now I am pregnant and his wife is back home. I found out about his wife because he was no longer spending the time at my place. 
I investigated and found out he's living a double life. I really feel like going to his wife and letting her know the truth. What do you think? Thanks for sharing this with me. And this is what I'm, I'm going to tell you what I think. Deception is of Satan. When you see a person can get up and deceive someone like that, that's of the devil. He's the father of it. I can tell you that much. And the devil is a deceiver. And his followers are deceivers too. The man fooled you. Right? He fooled you. And... He fooled you because every man or woman has the right to investigate a partner. You have the right to do that. Before you go into a relationship, you need to ask somebody who knows him, somebody who knows her, and do all the research you can, Not especially in these times when people are such liars. So many deceivers are out there. You know what I mean? And my question to you when you ask, or you're saying that you feel like you would tell his wife, but do you think that telling his wife is going to help the situation? Do you think that is going to help you to heal? Is it going to, you know, cause you to regain what you've lost? You're now pregnant. Is it going to make the situation better or is it going to make it worse? Will you be hurting the man or will you be hurting his wife? Which one? These are questions you have to ask. You know. My advice to you is find a job so you can support yourself and your child. And remember, he will reap whatsoever he sows. Will telling him destroy his marriage? He's wrong, but two wrongs don't make a, a right. So, can I just tell you, cut your losses and just run. Just cut your losses and run. Don't be vindictive. He lied to you. Just look at it and say, you know what? It happens once, it won't happen a second time. I'm going to make certain that whomever I'm going to talk to, I don't care how nice they seem and how polished and presentable they are and pleasant, I don't care. I'm going to check him or her out sister Jean so I left my husband for another man honestly I thought he did not love me anymore because I had put on so much weight turns out my husband really loved me the other guy and I are no longer together he left me for someone else my husband is the one helping me but he said that he is not interested in an intimate relationship with me he told me that he forgave me. Oh, how I regret throwing away a good life with my husband in ignorance. Please, I want to let listeners know to work with your partner and spouse because you are the one to be very sad and because you are the one that will be very sad and lonely. All right. Thank you for sharing this. Uh, many people struggle with weight issues. I struggle with weight issues myself. Sometimes I'm up, sometimes I'm down. Sometimes I'm all around. But I'm not going to say my husband doesn't love me because I put on some weight. I'm not going to do that. You know, they cook sweet food, I eat my food. And then the thing is, sometimes you're tired, you eat, especially if you're a working person. You will eat and you go to sleep. And that's not a good thing. Alright, so... Many people struggle with weight issues, so you shouldn't even think that. But that's how you felt anyway, right? All right, but you left him for another man. You didn't just leave him because you think he didn't love you. You left him for someone else, you know. And I always say to people, the enemy knows how to get to us. He knows because he studies us. He reads and he studies us. He knows our life history. He knows our stories. He knows what hurt us. He knows what harms us. He knows everything, practically almost everything about us that he can use against us. So he has the ammunition. That's why we have to cover ourselves, you know, with the armor of God. We have to always be suited up with the armor of God, you know. So, 
the, the enemy knows how to get into our relationships and how to unearth whatever foundation has been laid so you had a good foundation and he allowed you the devil didn't come and fight you know yes he comes and he, he, he uses he uses deception and he, he, he unearths some of the, the pillars of um, pillars that we have laid in our found in our relationship and he gets to you but you are the one who allows it so you allow the enemy to get into your mind he sowed seeds of doubt and you feasted on it and that's what happened really mm -hmm. so the armor of God is very important to defeat the enemy the helmet of salvation you need that as a covering on over your mind all right and also we are instructed to think on the following whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things have a good report feast on these things philippians 4 and verse 8 thank you so much again please do me a favor share these videos tell us how we are doing by liking them and subscribing as well also you can touch our notification button and that will tell you when there is a new video let us pray oh bless the name of the lord our god you remain our heavenly father we thank you for another opportunity to share your love your mercy and your grace with someone else oh cause them now to taste and see that thou art good and blessed is the man who trusts in you father we thank you again for this segment thank you for youtube lord thank you that we can reach others by just sharing we bless you now in jesus name we pray